What's up guys, your boy Benny. I've just returned from Madison Square Garden in downtown New York City, a historic venue where I witnessed history, President Trump remaking forever the American political landscape. President Trump brought together cultural titans like RFK Jr., like Tucker Carlson, Elon Musk, Dr. Phil, and Hulk Hogan, all sharing the same stage for the same mission, saving this country from the elites, restoring power to the people, and delivering the American nation back to those who actually own it, us. It was truly history in the making. I, I leave with one big takeaway, which is that President Trump will win in seven days time. Donald Trump will win because the left has decided to take this moment, something that I personally witnessed. I mean, we're talking like I was front and center. Look, look at this seat. Look at this seat they gave me. Look at that. First off, the, the stadium with 20,000 plus people and look at President Trump. Look at that. That's where the campaign put me. That's where they put your boy. There's Trump and Melania on stage. Guys, I saw it up close. They're losing. They've broken Godwin's law. And there's no coming back from this one. I'm going to explain to you exactly why I know, as a matter of fact, that they have nothing left to offer. And effectively now, the left is just screaming and lashing out and doing everything that they possibly can to try and damage President Trump on his road to victory. Godwin's law is a rule that says those who assert Nazism first in the article of an argument, they're the ones who will lose. Ladies and gentlemen, Godwin's law effectively says that over a long enough period of time in online discussion, the probability of comparing somebody to a Nazi or to Hitler approaches one, meaning it's a guarantee that one side, the losing side, is going to scream that their opponent is Hitler. And this is what you saw last night with Madison Square Garden. If you were actually there, you would have seen a beautiful scene like this. People singing patriotic music and songs, waving their iPhone lights in the air and being a joyous, happy movement. But if you were watching on MSNBC, what you saw were Nazis. Here's Godwin's law in action. But that jamboree happening right now, you see it there on your screen, in that place is particularly chilling because in 1939, more than 20,000 supporters of a different fascist leader, Adolf Hitler, packed the garden for a so-called pro-America rally. Mm a rally where speakers voiced anti-Semitic rhetoric from a stage draped with Nazi banners. When a Jewish protester rushed the stage, the Associated Press reported, quote, instantly, a dozen or more stormtroopers set upon him, knocking him down and beating him as he held his head in his arms. Mo oh, okay, so l l let's compare that with last night's Trump rally. That not only had Orthodox Jews praying at the rally itself, but had Jewish speakers, like, for instance, one of Donald Trump's closest advisors, Stephen Miller, who's Jewish, who had members of his family die in the Holocaust, who served with Jared Kushner, who's also Jewish, and President Trump has Jewish grandkids. I, is this all you have? That there, there was a, a rally a hundred years ago in the same location that was a Nazi rally. That's it. That's, that's your argument, MSNBC. Let's continue to listen. His clothing was torn from his body. Later, he was booked for disorderly conduct. Now, against that backdrop of history, Donald Trump, the man who has threatened to use the military against opponents he calls enemies from within, who has threatened to use, use the troops to quell what he says are lawless cities and to use those troops to carry out mass deportations of immigrants, is once again 
turning Madison Square Garden into a staging ground for extremism. So let me give you a little lesson on this. One, Madison Square Garden has changed locations. This is not the same Madison Square Garden. This is an entirely different location. The name may have stayed the same, but the building itself has been completely torn down and rebuilt. Two, there have been political rallies at Madison Square Garden, including, but not limited to, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy, Lyndon Baines Johnson, more recently, Bill Clinton and his 1992 Democrat National Convention. Did you call them Nazis? Since they used a building with the same name? No, of course not. MSNBC should lose their broadcasting license for this. And the reason why this is something that's got me so angry, although you have to kind of laugh at it, and ultimately you know that the left has lost when they are resorting to these style of arguments, is because of the absurdity of it. Here's, here's the row that I was sitting in. You might recognize Terrence Williams, rapper Forgiato Blow. Not exactly people you'd expect to see at, at your average Nazi rally. Hmm. But here they are, sitting front and center in the president's box. Libs are losing their minds because this rally espoused populism. Yeah, populism is popular. The people at this rally were predominantly sons and daughters of immigrants from New York, which is a melting pot. Right behind me were multiple rappers, Flavio Foreign, for instance. The entire crowd was this diverse America love fest with one major goal, to say F you to the real fascists, the real people who wish to choke us out, stomp on our necks, kill our free speech, and eliminate the American dream altogether. No, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you exactly what my experience was inside of this, one of the single greatest, if not the greatest political rally in American history. A total and complete success and victory for the MAGA movement and proof that this is a durable movement that will live on long after you and I. This is a movement for our children. This is a movement for our nation. And here's my story from yesterday from our first person perspective. So it began with us flying to New York City early in the morning. We traveled from the airport straight to Madison Square Garden and hit the streets. People were excited and boisterous and happy to talk with us. We wanted to do some man on the street interviews. And let me tell you, man, the city was painted red. There were red MAGA hats in every direction. You've never seen anything like it. And I think this was the value of the actual event itself was to prove that this movement is bigger than red or blue states or red or blue cities. That this is a movement for all Americans. And you certainly saw it on the streets of New York City yesterday. It's something that caused libs to get triggered during one interview. A lib started screaming and flipping us off. Happened to be with a black man who was wearing a MAGA hat. Hmm. Seems a little bit like Nazi behavior. But I digress. As we headed into the arena, it was impossible to not run into somebody wearing a MAGA hat or a Trump shirt. The entire city was covered and the lines stretched down the street, around the block, and these New York blocks are massive for miles and miles and miles and miles. Luckily, our campaign contacts with the Trump administration who had invited us got us inside of the building. 93,000 people had to watch from outside of Madison Square Garden. They couldn't get in. As we headed inside, we went through the typical Secret Service security check protocols and then entered Madison Square Garden while it was still relatively empty. However, the love was instant. Awesome, great to be here. What up, King? How you doing, oh, man? What's How going you? on? Awesome. New York showing up strong. Nice to meet you. Jersey strong. Yeah, of course, honey. 
This is a moment where I just want to shout out our subscribers and the people who make all of this possible. I freaking love getting out of the studio to meet everyone. It is always my great honor. I love getting a chance to take selfies, talk with people, sign autographs. I mean, whatever people want, really. And there was tons of that. It really makes the audience real when you step out and press the flesh. And this is the best part of the job. Seeing the people who your work affects every single day. And we love you. And we will show up for you. And you show up for us. And so we did a selfie line for like 90 straight minutes at this, at this rally, which was freaking awesome. Finally, we were told you sit your asses down in your seat. And sure enough, our seats were in the president's box itself. We were there as multiple speakers walked down that beautiful red carpet to their speech. We got to dance with Alina Haba. We got to shout out some of our boys, some friends of the show and some friends of the movement that we're helping build here on this channel. Great. I'm gonna jump in. Do it. Yeah. I'm gonna take Rick privilege, man. I'm gonna take Rick privilege. I almost lifted the wall. Almost, almost. Front row with Terrence. Front row with Beanie. Y'all, Madison Square Garden, phenomenal. This is epic. Like, no president, nobody else. Kamala could never do this. Look at this. Kamala could never. Trump 2024, let's go. And it was just so awesome to be able to vibe and to give the extra energy that we know every speaker needs. Because we do speak at events, and it's good when the crowd is energized. It's great when people are vibing with what you're saying and doing. And, and this is a vibe. This was the vibe. The vibe was love. Love of this country. Excitement and electricity. Listen to some of the roars like when Elon Musk goes on stage. Listen to this. Tucker Carlson holding it down. Vivek Ranswamy. And, of course, Melania Trump introducing her husband, Donald Trump, in an epic moment of the night. Ah, oh, it was just Wonderful, look at Elon. Look at him jumping for joy. From our seat, you could actually see Elon uh, teaching his kid how to fist bump or his son, who's named Little X, uh, waving his Trump sign. It was heartwarming. It was not dark or sinister. That's the lie. And quite frankly, all they have left is lies. It was beautiful and uplifting and in an incredibly inspiring night. Ladies and gentlemen, what Donald Trump did was uplift and unify. Like this, in his closing argument, Donald Trump laying out what this movement is really all about. After all we have been through together, we stand on the verge of the four greatest years in the history of the USA. With your help from now until election day, we will restore America's promise. We will put America first and we will take back the nation that we all love. We bleed the same blood. We share the same home and we salute the same great American flag. We are one people, one family, and one glorious nation under God. We will never give in, we will never give up, we will never ever back down, and we will never ever 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 surrender. Together we will fight, 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 and we will win, win, win. We're gonna win, win, win. At the end of the night, we were able to get ushered sort of in through the bowels of uh, Madison Square Garden, buy all the sweets, and out onto the street with a lot of thank yous and a lot of warmth in our heart. It was chilly in New York, man. 
but it was an atmosphere of extreme warmth from this movement. The movement of the red hat that's as red as the blood that courses through every patriot's veins. Because we all bleed red. And we all have the same flag, red, white, and blue. Donald Trump is the unifying candidate. And he unified by showing that he can do it in the darkest of blue cities. A city that wants to lock him away in prison and steal everything from him. Donald Trump gave us the right to believe again in this country, to believe in ourselves, and to believe in what this nation was meant to be, which is a nation of all of us, created equal, with this perfect union, to live out an American dream. And that's what you saw on stage at the rally last night. It was the opposite of a Nazi rally. It was a rally that could save America, and I think it will. That's what I saw last night in Madison Square Garden, and that is the truth. Let's go save America. It's your boy, Danny. See ya.